Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, October 24, 2018 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Denver, Colorado. Well, Xavier went hunting again and in doing so he came across some malware that uses simple base64 encoding in order to disguise itself, which apparently is sufficient to fool most antivirus tools according to VirusTotal. And then it used PowerShell to install additional tools. Now the PowerShell script uh, did adjust itself for various uh, Windows versions, so whatever version of PowerShell PowerShell was available, it used. And then as a random bonus, it did download an invoice from an S3 bucket to sort of fulfill its claim that it was an invoice. So supposedly this is going to make the user feel safe. Now they know nothing about that invoice. It's sort of a very random invoice, but they just assume someone sent that invoice to the wrong recipient. Also, the invoice is displayed using the PowerShell start process command, which will use the default image viewer. So the user will see the expected image viewer for their particular system pop up to display this invoice. And then there's some pushback against DNS over HTTPS. The pushback comes from Paul Vixie. Now, Paul Vixie was part of the early development of DNS, also part of the bind name server. Now, his main argument is that DNS over HTTPS does bypass a lot of enterprise security mechanisms. Now, some people may say that this is exactly what DNS over HTTPS is supposed to accomplish. Now, Paul says uh, if you just want privacy, you can use DNS over TLS. DNS over TLS uses port 853, not port 443, so it's easier blocked in an enterprise network if this protocol is not supposed to be used. Now, in general, this is really one of the big conflicts I see coming up where these privacy mechanisms do hurt enterprise security and some of the legitimate ways how enterprises try to ensure that their systems aren't compromised. The real alternative here is better endpoint security, but we all know that endpoint security isn't really all that easy either. And network security, network monitoring, proxies and the like are a really important sort of par to the security puzzle in enterprises. I've been talking about this at some recent SANS conferences and maybe in November I'll get around to record some webcast or something going over some of these protocol changes. And the secure messaging application Signal apparently leaves the encryption key for its configuration database exposed on the system, at least for the desktop version. The problem here is that Signal's configuration database is encrypted, but well, uh, where to store the key? That's sort of one of those fundamental problems about encryption at rest. And in this case, well, they didn't resolve the problem, they just left the key exposed. So this doesn't really provide any security then because anybody who could download that configuration file could also download the encryption key. They just have to look at the right file. It's not at least saved in the same file as the configuration. So it's not sort of appended to it or anything stupid like this, which has happened too. Now, the only real way to mitigate this is to ask the user to use a password that will then be used to either derive this encryption key or to encrypt the encryption key. And Firefox 63 was released with some interesting security changes. First of all, tracking cookies are now no longer allowed, which means that any website that's on a list of tracking websites is not allowed to set a cookie. Secondly, Firefox started to actively advertise Proton VPN. Now, this is not just a security thing, but it's also supposed to help Firefox or Mozilla to diversify its revenue base. Right now, most of the money for Mozilla and Firefox comes from Google, which is of course a competitor. And the agreement with Google will expire next year, so they're a little bit afraid that Google may not renew. 
What's sort of interesting is that this advertisement for Proton VPN will only be shown at this point if you are visiting competing VPN services. There is essentially a list of websites that's stored in Firefox that triggers this pop-up. And then it will also be impossible to turn off auto update in Firefox starting with version 63. The configuration option no longer exists. So you will have to essentially update whenever there is a new version of Firefox being released. This was the default configuration for a long time, but in particular enterprise users and such that try to first test any new browser version before they release them to their users will be of course, somewhat stuck here. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.